So, um, but yeah, here's the boards. Here's the, the main control panel. And actually, the nice thing is these boards are all marked and everything. So you can see this one isn't. But actually, this one, it looks like they put every all these um, plugs and things in here. They screwed them in because they use little nuts on the back, so you can't really take them out. And then they soldered the board on the back. So I'm going to have to unsolder that before I can get the board off or just, I don't know. Um, and then we've got the one of the front control panels. It's got the two meters on it and a couple of potentiometers and stuff like that. And then we've got our another, oh, see it's marked there. It says front CPU. <laughs> so I guess that's our CPU that drives the main everything. Um, then this board is servo circuit, so this probably probably uses those um, transistors there to drive the motors, and I think those are probably motor drivers as well. So, yes, this is actually a little bowed. A couple of the boards have some um, afterthought things on there that it looks like they added on. And a lot of them also have where more components could go. There's a lot of extra holes. So it looks like there could be different models that these boards could be used in. And then this one has a ton of wires just on there. And I have, in taking this apart, I have not cut a single wire. All of these are just plugs um, that plug onto the different boards. So it's very well done, very well engineered. We've actually got a delay line there that's got a silic, or a, um, it's a glass, or maybe it's quartz. On a glass plate in there that has um, ultrasonic transducers on it and it bounces it transduces an ultrasonic wave into one side of it and it bounces around on the around on a path and then it gets picked up by another transducer and it basically has a certain amount of delay that it takes for the wave to go all the way around in there so kind of cool and you see Got some more after things on there that they had to add on. There's a transistor there. But it's well done. I mean, it doesn't look like it'd really short out. I mean, it's possible it would, but it's pretty well done. It's neat. Um, and this board was, what was this board? This is Chroma circuit. Not sure what that would be for. But I would guess that that's probably um, probably something with the video. Um, and then we've got another board here. This is sync on circuit, and it's got that um, ultra capacitor on there. Not a very big one, but yep, it's got an ultra capacitor. So, and I actually already have one of those, so it's definitely the same model or a very similar model. So I've got one of those capacitors. This board is the audio circuit, and this one's probably also audio circuit, yep. Audio circuit R E F. Not sure what that stands for. Um, but there's some relays on there. And yeah, probably those are amplifiers I would imagine. I believe that the other one that I took apart, I got a bunch of amplifiers off the board. I don't remember which ones those were, but um yeah. Um, yeah. And then we've got connector circuit. So, oh, you know what? This is for the remote. That would have been a rem there. I think it was marked remote on the back panel, that plug. So, yep. And then this is a says counter circuit. So actually. Because these boards are kind of modular like this, um, I may actually be able to get this to work because that's probably some sort of a counter chip there and then it would... So I think this board was actually only does counting, so I might actually be able to get this to work and have it actually count, I don't know. I'm going to have to see if I can look up part numbers or try and figure out what the pinouts on it are. Maybe reverse engineer it, see if I can get it to work, because that would be kind of cool to have. Um, but yeah. And then we've got another little board here that is just two transistors on there. Um, and here's the 
piece that actually pulls the tape in, put the tape in here, and then the motor drives the um, the bed part that pushes the tape onto the um, drive mechanism and everything like that. And it's actually got some little light bulbs up here, as well as a uh, this mirror. I figured out that it actually swings down once the tape goes in, so that you can see the tape, and you can see if the um, if it's actually spinning or not, and see how much this tape is left. So I actually never, I actually never figured out what that was before, but now I know. So, so yeah. And maybe I'll power that up and see if, see if I can show you guys what it does. And here's actually the front panel. As you can see, this is very well built. Um, it looks like it's extruded aluminum, or it is. And there is another L piece on here, like this. But they cut all of that off except for those two tabs, which seems like would have been a lot of work to, a lot of work and expensive to do to cut that whole thing off just for those two tabs. <laughs> but it's very nice, very well built. So, um, but yeah, let's take a couple more things apart here, and um, I'll show you this working and maybe some parts on here too. All right, so I just replaced the. Um, belts with some rubber bands or well there wasn't really any belts but I put some um, rubber bands on there so there's one here actually that's a o-ring but it works good so first we'll just test out the motor here that pulls the tape in and gets it into position on the um, winders there so let's just hook up this motor and as you can see there it goes it just went down and as you can see this little mirror here drops down so that you can see where how far the tape is so you can see there's a bunch of tape there, right there you can see that. You can see if it's spinning too, and that's what that mirror does. So without that mirror, you wouldn't be able to see that very well. Um, but yeah, so that's what that mirror does, and then there's light bulbs to illuminate it in there, so you can see. Um, and then we'll just reverse it here, and you can see this mechanism. Whoop, I gotta switch some of my clip leads around here. All right, here we go. Very ingenious mechanism there. So um, now we're just going to put the, this aside for a minute here. Get the tape out of here. So that basically just puts the tape on here and as well as pushes the little button over here in so that it opens it up. So there we go. So that's what that does. It gets it into position like this. And then I'm done. So let's try that again. There we go. Tape is coming out. There we go. Just put it around the drum. I think my belt's slipping a little bit. I think that's just the problem is. Yeah, it's just moving it a little tiny bit there. I think it might be there. So yeah, it moves the um, pinch roller over to the um, motor there that drives the belt and pulls the tape out all around the drum as well as advancing a bunch of little um, arms and things like this that kind of tension the tape. So a bunch of little tape temp tensioners. This one actually doesn't really look like it. Oh, that just pushes it against there. It doesn't look like it quite made it all the way out though. I think the, um, the belt's slipping too much. It's not quite tight enough. But I believe that's a belt tensioner. That actually doesn't look like it's on the right side. I'm not sure what went there, but it doesn't seem to do anything, but but yeah, let's just put it back in. Um, normally when it'd be going back in though, these motors here would be, or the motor that drives the tape around would actually be pulling it back in, so the tape is just kind of going to flop around when I do it. Yeah, you know what, maybe my belt broke. It's not doing, oh, it's going a little, there we go. So that is the tape back in, basically. So you can just pull the tape out, and that is pretty much how it works. Very roughly, but um, yeah. It actually looks like it has some little sensors there that sense how fast this is spinning. It's got a bunch of brakes on here, too. <laughs> so this one has three brakes. This one has a brake here that the um, actual felt fell off, but then another brake there. And the rubber thing fell off of here. So we've actually got an eye here to sense if the um, tape is in or not, I think. 
or maybe if the tape broke or maybe it senses the clear section of tape at the ends um, to tell if, if it's near the end or not. Um, then we've got some sort of recording heads here and stuff like that. Um, pickup heads. And um, yeah, this is all, all on a big chunk of aluminum or magnesium. Not sure what that is, but big chunk of something. So I'm excited about that motor. That's a nice motor there. <laughs> but yeah. Oh yeah, and then here's the transformer. So this is what it looks like under the cover. So it looks like the way they made this is first they wound up this um, iron or steel strap kind of stuff. They wound that up into that shape, probably around a form or something like that. And they actually tack welded it right there to finish it off. And then they um, put these plastic bobbins on here. They clipped those on. Those fit together. So there would have been two pieces of the bobbin they would have clipped together. And then they would have put it in a machine that would have um, probably used these teeth on here, kind of like a gear. And it would have engaged that and spun it and wound up the wire on each spool. So really cool how they made that. Um, probably would have taken, probably would have been very expensive to make. And it looks like it's very compact, especially for the amount of copper that's actually on there. I mean, this thing's pretty heavy. And it looks like it would have been a pretty efficient transformer too because the core doesn't have any brakes in it like normal um, normal ones do. Normal transformers have a brake um, where the I and the E pieces fit together. So this doesn't have that. So it may have been actually very efficient. And also the more tapered corners. So pretty cool transformer there. Um, but yeah. Pretty cool VCR altogether. So I hope you guys enjoyed this um, teardown of this VCR. I found it interesting. That's about it. Thanks for